What is up my friends, it's c 3 and I want to show you the final mix of the song that I recorded in my car called I Need Air. And uh, to do that, first of all I'm going to let you hear what the original recordings sounded like that were recorded in the car. So I've actually got a separate DAW open with the stems of the song. And we'll hear just how terrible it sounds uh, without any effects or anything and then contrast that to how it sounds with all the effects applied and everything like that. And then I'll dive into a number of things that I did, uh, like the I'll show you the EQ I did on some of the tracks, some of the compression I did, uh, some of the ambient sounds that I uh, added to make the guitars sound a little bit better and stuff. Uh, so a bunch of interesting and fun stuff here. Okay, so first things first, let's hear what this song would have sounded like if I didn't do any mixing at all. These are just the stems of the song. You can see here acoustic guitars, backup vocals, crash, all the drums. Uh, I do have the MIDI bass that I used. Um, so I didn't actually have a bass guitar in the song. I don't even own a bass guitar. So that is the one non-recorded instrument is a MIDI bass. Other than that, everything was recorded in my car. Let's hear just how terrible it sounded before mixing. There's one thing that I'd rather do now. Record a stupid song in this blue old car. Freaking AC doesn't even work, but it won't stop me now. But it's seriously so hot, I might have a heat stroke then. I think I really Here it is with the song mixed. There's one thing that I'd rather do now. Record a stupid song in this blue. And not mixed. I guess, but there's one thing that I'd rather do now. Record a stupid song in this blue old car. So it's very dead. That's that's the one thing I want to point out about recording a song in your car. If you're ever uh, going going to do that, uh, just be prepared to have every instrument sound like it is getting sucked through a black hole and a never-ending pit of nothingness is on the other side of that black hole. Everything is so dead, there is no reverb or anything, just the second a sound is made, it is quieted by the silencers of hell. Sorry, that got a little dramatic, but really though, uh, everything was just, uh, let's just single out a couple of things here. Let's take the kick drum, for example. This sounds like a bunch of rat farts or something. Listen to this, listen to the kick drum. That is the weakest sounding kick drum in the history of the world because I was just like tapping it with a drumstick. That was the hardest instrument to mix out of everything. Let's get to the rack tom and just listen to how terrible that sounded. Hear that ringing sound and it's just kind of dead. I had it sitting on my lap and my legs were like muting the bottom of it. Not ideal. All right, let's start with EQ. Let me tell you how I EQ'd the song. Uh, let's look at the floor tom, for example. Look at that EQ. All right, let me just toggle the EQ on and off. Here it is with the EQ. Without it. So here it is in context with the song, with the EQ on. Listen in the in your right headphone, that little. Now without EQ. And that final part of the drum fill, it's like, oh, you can kind of hear that something's there, but then you add that EQ in. Uh, everything else, like the vocals, I didn't have to do anything too drastic. Just shaved off some of the lower frequencies, uh, maybe dipped around 500 hertz or so to get rid of some of the muddiness. Um, the vocals weren't too bad. They were the easiest to mix, I think. All right, let's take a look at the snare. I added a saturation plugin. Again, these are actually all stock plugins that come with Reaper with the exception of this compressor. This is what came with my Focusrite 
Scarlet uh, interface, but I added uh, some saturation and a distortion. So here's what the snare sounds like with these saturation and distortion effects in context with the song, and then I'll turn them off. It's subtle, if you've got decent headphones though, you'll notice that it's almost like the snare is just a little bit louder, but it's not louder necessarily because of volume. It's louder because it's got some grit in there that's just making it cut through a little bit more. Main thing with the drums, while we're on the subject of the drums, how did I get them to go from, uh, you know, sounding like this, to sounding like this. It really was very basic effects, you guys. There wasn't anything too crazy. EQ, as I showed you earlier, just kind of had to do some drastic things. Again, while I was doing EQ, I was listening to the whole song in mono and making like some of those boosts on the floor tom and everything to make sure I could hear it standing out in context with the rest of the song. Um, compression, and then what really helped a lot was I did a separate, what did I call it, double drums. I did an auxiliary track where I routed all six drum pieces, um, not the cymbals though. So I guess just four, the kick, the snare, and the toms. I routed them through a separate auxiliary track called Double Drums. And on this track, I uh, did ridiculous amount of compression and uh, just a little bit of EQing. Um, but mostly, this whole the whole purpose of routing the, uh, the drums through a separate track was to have the natural sound of the drums and then a separate sound of drums that was extremely compressed and it brought up the punchiness of the drums and that's where what I just let you listen to that's where we got some of that punchiness from look over here at the meters and you'll see what I'm talking about look at that gain reduction about 12 decibels of gain reduction because it is just getting slammed in there but you hear pretty much all you're hearing is just very punchy drums sorry if I'm using the same adjectives so I mixed that sound with the natural sound of the drums and kind of balanced the levels so that uh, what we ended up with was... Uh Which is way better than this. All right, let's switch gears and talk about the guitars. Um, I did in fact record with the, the Blue Yeti microphone hooked up to, not hooked up to, but aimed at my tiny little... What the let me crap? grab it. My tiny little micro cube amp. It is battery powered. Um, so that's what made it possible for me to record it in the car. And I debated if I should use the distortion settings and everything on here, or if I should just record a clean sound coming out of here into the mic and then use guitar rig to get some of the amp sound. So that is what I ended up doing. I recorded actually just a clean guitar sound. So here's actually what the uh, the guitar sounded like recorded in the car um, coming clean out of my little amp into the Blue Yeti microphone. <laughs> So that really cool, well, maybe you don't think it's cool, but I thought it was kind of cool, that guitar solo part in the song. Originally, it sounded like this. So, I, I ended up, uh, as I mentioned before, I decided to use guitar rig, um, which is just a 
amp simulating software to get the distorted sound. It probably would have been fine to just do it on the amp and I did want to talk about the guitars for a second here just because I, I didn't, I, I was very tempted uh, while making this song to just plug my guitar directly into my laptop and just record a clean signal into the laptop and then use that clean signal in guitar rig. But I really wanted to make this legit as I could and so I still had it coming through an amp, I still had it recorded into a microphone, um, but then I just basically added a distortion effect to that recording by using guitar rig. And so uh, we ended up with like this sound. So yeah, a little tidbit of how I did the guitars. Now, something that I felt was missing as I was mixing the song, it was just, it was so plain to just have, you know, left guitar, right guitar, and, you know, kind of big chorus with, you know, guitar down the middle doing that riff. Um, so I started thinking, well, what if I had a delay on there? On, um, so in like the verse, for example, no, I swear I do. that Paul muted part, it's all right, I guess, but there's one thing that I'd rather do. Now listen, if you, I hope that you're listening to this whole thing on headphones, it's very helpful. Um, listen in the right earphone to this kind of ambient, like, high sound. My job, you know, I swear I do. It's it almost sounds like an organ is being played. My job, you know, I swear I do. It's all... Hear that kind of echo, delay on there? Um, that is this auxiliary track right here, Guitar Delay, and it's just a plugin that came with Reaper called Delay Floaty. I was just kind of experimenting with some of them, um, and it ended up adding this really cool, let's just uh, solo it so you can hear it. Pretty cool. And I think I ended up routing a number of the guitars through that. Uh, yeah, I even put the acoustic guitars through it. And then I adjusted it individually for each guitar, like the actual volume of it. So it wasn't very prominent with some of the instruments. But that was, that was, I think when I find, when I did that, it was like kind of an aha moment. Like, wow, that is making a big difference in the song. That's really adding some glue, some ambience. It's making it feel like a real song. Um, that's what helped, helped me feel like this is gonna turn out to sound pretty good. And finally, this is something that I wanted to show you guys. Uh, leading up to the uh, kind of guitar solo slash instrumental part of the song, I really wanted it to have some impact coming out of that acoustic verse, and so I kind of cropped out a part of the guitars that I recorded that had a certain note that I wanted and I reversed it and I faded it in so that it gave me this really cool uh, fade in effect. And so here it is with the song. See, and if I took those out, Listen how lame that transition would be. Back now, I might die before I say I need eh, it could have been cool maybe if I cut out even more instruments and just had the little drum fill. But I thought, hey, let's add these and get that little thingy going on. I might die before I say I need it. So just little things like that. I, I think I also had a reverse cymbal effect if you hear Yeah, you can hear the crash going shh, like building up to it. I just took one of the cymbal crashes and reversed it so that it had, you know, the tail quiet end building up to the crescendo of the actual crash. You hear that swoop in shh, right before I say I need air. So that, my friends, is how I mixed the car song I Need Air. And a cool little bonus for those of you that have stuck around and watched this entire video. If you go to the description, you will notice a link 
that has the original recordings of the instruments so that you can download it and mix it yourself if you'd like to. Uh, see what you can do to improve that kick drum, for example. That is the crappiest, rat fartiest sounding kick drum in the history of the world. See what you can do to make that sound better. Uh, if you do end up downloading it and mixing the song and you want to send it to me, my email address is c.threep at gmail.com. You can send it to me and say, hey, I mixed the song. Um, just give it a shot. I think that would be kind of cool for you guys to to do. If you have any other questions or comments about how I mix the song, obviously I didn't want to make this video seven hours long, so uh, leave me a comment and say, hey, how did you do this? Or how did you pull this off? Or this sounded terrible, I think you should have done that. Then let me know, we can talk about it. And that's it. Bye.